As a therapist who's trying to help individuals come to terms with the narcissist in their life, I realize there are two different ways that we can uh, gain an understanding of what this pattern of life is like. One is we can be a little bit intellectual or academic in the way that we look at it, and let's realize that there are certain ingredients that are uh, some of the hallmarks of a narcissist, high control, low empathy, exploitive, manipulative behavior, a need to be superior, uh, as a sense of entitlement, uh, things of that nature, very self-absorbed way of living. But then as a therapist, I'm dealing with people in real time and we're wanting to look at how narcissism tends to play out inside the home or inside of work and relationships. And so I like to look at some of the common behaviors that go along with the uh, the actual definition of narcissism so that you can see that when these behaviors are happening, you know what's going on and you can make uh, adjustments accordingly. Knowledge is power and you need to know what it is that you're dealing with. So today I've come up with what I'm referring to as a real life checklist for identifying narcissism. I want to go beyond just the, uh, the technical definition of narcissism and identify for you 20 different uh, ingredients that can uh, show you that you're probably dealing with a person that has a strong narcissistic bent. Now, because it's a long list, what I've done is I've written an article and I've posted it on uh, survivingnarcissism.tv. And so uh, rather than getting uh, lost in all of these 20 things that I'm going to mention to you, go there and you can uh, pick up on that article and we're going to have all 20 of these listed there. And it's got the same title as as the, uh, the video that we have here. So let's get right to it. 20 real life uh, uh, elements that tell you that you're uh, dealing with a narcissist. Number one, their public self and private self do not match, which is a nice way for me to say narcissists can be phony. Uh, you, they, they may be charming on the outside, but behind, uh, but behind the scenes, you know them to be something very diff uh, different. They can be very difficult and, uh, and not at all what uh, they want other people out there to think of them to be. Number two, <clears throat> loyalty is superficial at best, at least their loyalty toward you. In other words, they think of you as someone who's utile. As long as you serve a function for them, they're okay. But once you stop ser serving the function, in other words, you don't give them supply, you're out the door. Number three, narcissists cannot uh, admit mistakes. In fact, they keep repeating the same mistakes over and over. Uh, and it's like anytime you try to confront them, uh, their response is, you don't know what you're talking about. If I, if you interpret something as a mistake, it's because of something you did or someone else did. So they blame and they, they shift the, the focus on to other individuals. <clears throat> uh, number four, there can be lots of unsolicited advice. By the way, I have a little uh, formula that I use. Unsolicited advice equals criticisms. Narciss narcissists are critics. Uh, they they uh, are watching you, trying to figure out what you've done wrong recently, and they're not at all bashful about letting you know what you've done that doesn't please them. Number five, introspective thinking is virtually non-existent. Uh, they're not the kind of individuals that think, you know, who am I? And what is it that prompts me to be the way that I am? Uh, they, uh, they, they live behind a false self. They live with a mask on. And so uh, for them to introspect would mean they'd have to be honest about their fears and their insecurity and, and many of the hurts that they have uh, experienced. It's like, uh, I don't need to look at all that kind of stuff. And so they, they have an exterior that's very thick that prompts them to do anything but look truly in an honest way at who they are. Number six, uh, they can make many comments intended to remind you of your obligations. In other words, they have an agenda and they're not at all bashful about trying to fit you onto that agenda. Uh, they have favorite words like supposed to and have to and must and you'd better, you need to, things like that. Number seven, they have a strong inclination to other people. And by that, I mean, they put people in categories and it may be uh, the, your race or your gender or your lifestyle preferences or your belief systems or your interests and habits. And if you match pitch, then okay, you're in my club. And if you don't, it, you're just somebody I'm just going to dismiss. Thinking in terms of how we can learn from one another and actually gain because of our diversity is something that they just don't want to bother with. It threatens them because it means that they're, uh, they're not the, the ultimate special person. Uh, they don't want to consider you to be someone that they can learn from. <clears throat> Number eight, 
they nurse idealized fantasies. Now, many times they, uh, they want to be the best and so they can get caught up in materialism and they want to have the very best of things, even if they can't afford it or if they can't afford it. They don't want to be considered as ordinary or an average kind of a person. They can have fantasies of wonderful connections, which is why they may be prone towards sexual themes, whether it's the kind of movies or novels or uh, online kinds of things that they look at. Uh, they want to be with the beautiful people and they want to be uh, associated with folks who are going to admire and adore them. Number nine, they can be attracted to people or themes or activities that exude power. Uh, and authority. Uh, this explains why many narcissists will try to claw their way to the top of an organization. And they like themes like, you know, smack them down and be the best and be the meanest and be the baddest and just run over people if you have to make people understand that you're the, you're the authority. Uh, it's like, oh yeah, that's, that's real appealing to me. That's how you know you're somebody when you can run over people. Number 10. Emotional vulnerability is awkward at best with these individuals. When it comes time for them to, uh, to express tenderness or uh, soft and, and gentle kind of feelings, it's like, uh, that's, for, that's for people that are emotional weaklings and I don't want to be that. They have such a tight need to be in control and to, uh, to be, uh, give the appearance that they're on top of everything. Uh, vulnerability is very difficult for them. Number 11. They're quite willing to lie and leave out essential facts when they're talking with you about things. And they can be secret keepers. Uh, to them, uh, life is a competition. And rather than just having a sense of honesty and openness and trustworthiness, uh, they, they just think, you know, I, all I want to do is win over you. And truth is expedience, whatever I need it to be today. Number 12, they often use veiled threats. Have you ever been with a narcissist who said something like, you better think twice about what you're going to do now. Do you understand? Or they may say something like, uh, you better watch your mouth or around me. Those things are not going to be tolerated. And they can have these, uh, these kind of threats and you're thinking, or else what? And it's like, just try me, try me. <laughs> and, and it's their way of saying, I'm superior and don't you forget that. Number 13. They can be extreme in the way that they manage money. Now, sometimes they can be extremely tight and very dictatorial in the way that money is meted out. Other times they can be extremely loose. And usually it's in self-indulgence uh, where it's like, oh, whatever I want, then that's what I get. And I've heard stories of people buying all sorts of lavish things for themselves or being very tight with other individuals about what they can and cannot purchase. Money to them represents power and they want to have power and they want to have self-indulgence. Number 14, if you confront the narcissist, you'll probably be met with irrational anger. Uh, narcissists can just have this how dare you mentality if you have an idea that conflicts with them. And I'm thinking, why is it so threatening that somebody disagrees with you and they just can't take confrontations? Anger is going to come out either through an openly aggressive or a passive aggressive way. Number 15, they are persistently dismissive of other people's feelings. Narcissists have a very strong all or nothing, black or white approach toward life and emotions tend not to fit into black and white slots. And therefore, since they can't make nar uh, emotions fit, then it's like, well, then forget it. If you feel something, it's like, well, I wouldn't have felt that. Rather than saying, well, help me understand that. It's like, well, then you just have to be, uh, you're wrong. You're wrong. And so they dismiss you. Number 16, has this ever happened to you? Narcissists like to steal affirmation from other people. Let's suppose that you've been uh, given some sort of a re reward or a very nice compliment and the narcissist comes along and says, well, you know, I made the whole thing possible. <laughs> and, and instead of letting you have the limelight for a few moments, it's like, no, I want the limelight over here on me. And so they can't really stand for others to be regaled. They have to be the one who's, uh, who's seen as being the utmost and the best kind of person. Number, um, number 17, there can be a chronic undertow of frustration and annoyance that they exude. Have you ever felt like when you're around that narcissist, 
got to be walking on eggshells. Well, am I going to say the wrong thing today? Or you know how they get, or don't bring up this topic. Or the last time I was with them, they got in a real bad mood. You never quite know when or if it's going to happen, but at, at some point the, the frustration is going to show up. And so you, you feel like you're constantly on guard around that person. Number 18, they have many double standards. Uh, to them, there's not a sense of equality. You're different from them. So what uh, matters to you or what re is required of you uh, is not required of them. I can lie, but you can't. Uh, I, I can be angry and I can scream, but you'd better not do that towards me. Uh, I can be wasteful, but you'd better not be wasteful. Things like that. Number 19, narcissists have a very poor comprehension of love. To them, love equates to conformity. Now, in early times of getting to know you, uh, they can love bomb you and they can try to create an idealized uh, sense where you'll admire them, but that's not really love. Love in the enduring sense uh, involves things like patience and tolerance and acceptance, uh, and those are ingredients that narcissists are in short supply of. And then number 20, uh, they can have little to no real appreciation for your boundaries. Now, let's keep in mind that boundaries means that you've got a definition for who you are and you stay inside of your own definition. And the narcissist is thinking, no, 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 no. I define you. You don't define you. You have to do what I say. And so they'll blur those boundaries and try to get inside your world and tell you who you're supposed to be. They don't respect your right and your freedom to be you. So there you have it. Those are 20 uh, real life ingredients or indicators that says you're dealing with a narcissistic person. Uh, two thoughts on that. Number one, make sure that as you see those characteristics in them, that those are characteristics that you yourself are willing to uh, examine and make sure are not going to be predominant in your personal life. Number two, when you do see these uh, kind of ingredients, uh, recognize you're dealing with a pretty unhealthy person. By the way, just so you know, if an individual has 10 or more of these 20 indicators, uh, that's not a good sign. If they have 15 or more, then that's an indication that says uh, you're in with a very, very toxic kind of person. And this is a relationship that is not going to go very well at all. So I hope that uh, you having these real life indicators of what narcissism uh, looks like and how it plays out, it can help you decide how you're going to live and who you're going to attach to or not uh, so that you can have a life of cleanness and goodness. Now, I mentioned that uh, we have a, uh, a website, survivingnarcissism.tv. Uh, Gus likes that website. He's, he's not on there because we don't have pictures of him. We probably should. Uh, right now, he's just, I gave him a bath this weekend, so I ought to be okay. Uh, but anyway, we do have an article that has uh, the title for this uh, for this um, video. So I hope that you can uh, uh, avail yourself to survivingnarcissism.tv. If you'd like to uh, talk with somebody online, I know some of you would uh, prefer having some counseling with people uh, from the comfort of your own home. We vetted a group of individuals who can help you out with that. We have a link uh, that you can go to with respect to that. And if you would like to uh, have some at-home online uh, testing for hormonal imbalances due to some of the stress that you're under uh, because of living with uh, difficult people, we have links that can help you with that. In addition, we have links to my online workshops, my books, and even coffee mugs. Now, just know it's my desire for you to be an informed person. Information and knowledge is power, and I want you to take the power upon yourself to say, I'm going to live in healthiness. I'm on team healthy. And if this individual wants to take me to an entirely different place, thanks, but no place. I'm sticking with my determinations to be a reasonable individual.